Good morning and welcome to the faith community of St. Maria Goretti and Our Lady of the Angels parishes. Today we celebrate the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is Brother Jonathan. Please stand for our gathering procession. the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all so good morning good morning on this this frigid morning um, for the as we come to celebrate the third Sunday of ordinary time um, uh, the church has given us this Sunday, a lot to pray about, a lot to, to think about. Um, for for whatever reason, right now we're we're piled up with things. We have um, until tomorrow, till the end of tomorrow, we're in the middle of the week of the prayer for Christian unity, uh, that that all Christians may come together to be one. Uh, we're also in the middle of uh, prayer for nine days of life. Um, praying for the end of abortion. And then, and then this Sunday has been um, declared by the Pope as uh, Word of God Sunday. So all three, you know, very important things, including, you know, everything that's going on in our lives and everything that's going on in our world, uh, that we have lots and lots to pray for, lots and lots to think about. Uh, so as we prepare to celebrate these these sacred mysteries, uh, let's think about these things. Let's um, let's pray about them. Let's um, also ask God for for mercy and forgiveness for ourselves and for our world. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault therefore I ask Blessed Mary ever virgin all the angels and saints and to you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God may Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. <clears throat> the word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast. And all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil ways, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. your ways, O Lord, made known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. of your goodness, O oh Lord. Teach me your ways, O oh Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them. Those weeping as not weeping. Those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying 
as not owning, those using the, wor the world as not using it fully. For the world in its presence, in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. And they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them so they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. So I feel obligated, um, just to say a quick word on, on the second reading, um, when he says, you know, act like you're don't have any wives or something, um, please act like you have a wife if you, if you have one. Um, the, 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 Paul was, the, the point that Paul was making is, is that we should just always be ready uh, and waiting for, for the coming of Christ. Um, you can do that um, acting like you have a spouse, if you have a spouse. Um, this Friday, you know, it was the 48th anniversary of Roe versus Wade, the, the Supreme Court decision that made abortion legal in all 50 states. Uh, and this was a decision that has resulted since then, uh, depending on, on where you go, um, in between 61 to 67 million deaths. Um, Put that in perspective, that's a decision that's resulted in three times more deaths um, that occurred in the Holocaust. Um, that's a decision that has um, resulted in more deaths than, than the two most populated states in our nation, uh, Texas and California, combined. Uh, annually, Catholics from all over the, the country and, you know, and other defenders of, of life uh, meet in the nation's capital to to remember um, that decision and, and to fight for its for its change um, for the annual March for Life. Um, this year, that takes place next Friday, uh, January 19th or January 29th. Uh, but with everything in this year of COVID or this time of COVID, uh, the march has be 
become virtual. Uh, so at least this year, you don't have to go to Washington, D.C. To, to participate. Uh, you can participate at, in your own home. Uh, I, myself, have had an opportunity to go to attend the march several times. And with the last being three years ago, when I went with a, with a youth group. And it's the only time that I, that I also went to the pro-life mass that kicks off the, the march at the Capital One Arena, where you know, the Washington Capitals play. And the hom homeless there, I believe his name was Michael Choi, Father Michael Choi, I'm not certain. Um, but I, I believe that's his name said a couple things that I, I will never forget. Uh, first, when talking about the, the pro-abortion, um, the pro-abortion uh, effort, um, he said, you know, they want to always make it about choice, um, that it's all about choice. You know, that's what they say, um, but it's not really what they do. They don't so much promote choice, they, they promote fear in, in promoting abortion. You know, they tell pregnant women and, and young men that, you know, you can't be a mother. You know, you can't be a father. You know, you're, you're simply just not strong enough for that. You're not, you know, smart enough for that. Uh, having a baby will just ruin your life. You know, having a baby is going to mess up all your dreams. You know, if you have a child, you know, you're just going to get stuck. You're just going to get stuck in your life. You're going to be miserable the rest of your life. You're never going to be able to do what you want to do, you know, if you have this baby. So it's so much better in the end to, to just, you know, end this life. Because, you know, you, you really can't handle it. It's, it's too much for you. You know, ironically, of course, this is the, the campaign, the, the effort that says that they are, they're, you know, out to empower women, you know, by telling them what they can't do. Uh, the second thing that struck me was was a situation that, that he talked about where a woman came to him who was pregnant uh, and wanted to talk. Uh, she was torn because she believed that, that abortion was wrong, you know, that abortion was evil, uh, but, but she was, you know, so highly influenced uh, by society, by the propaganda of fear of the abortion industry, uh, that she told Father Choi that she didn't think that she had the capacity uh, to love this child, you know, to, to love the child if, if she brought it to term. You know, her mind was, was so poisoned and manipulated by the culture of death that she didn't think she could do it. She didn't think she could do it. Almost as if death was the only answer. I mean, wouldn't it be better to abort a child than, than to have a child born in the world to a loveless mother? Uh, wouldn't that be a face worse than death? Uh, Father Choi, you know, told her that she was underestimating herself, underestimating her ability, uh, her capacity to love, that she was underestimating her capacity to love. You know, I can tell you that I've heard many stories about women who, who you know, really struggled about whether to have an abortion or not, and then decided not to. Uh, and they're so glad they did, didn't have the abortion. Uh, that their son or their daughter did not wind up ruining their life, but became the, you know, a primary source of joy and happiness in their life. And I've never, ever heard once a woman saying, after having her child, you know, that she had really wished she had an abortion instead. You know, I've never once heard them say that their life would have been better if they had killed their child. You know, different maybe, sure, but better, never, never better. You know, it's the fear, the, the devil uses fear. He uses fear, he uses self-doubt uh, to make us underestimate ourselves. You know, under, underestimate our capacity to love, uh, underestimate our capacity to care. Underestimate, underestimate our capacity to do, you know, great things for God. You know, no matter what we're talking about, whether we're talking about our capacity to love a newborn child or our capacity to stand up for other issues, other life issues like, like euthanasia, the death penalty, um, immigration, um, you know, all the, all the things 
uh, that, that threaten the dignity of human life in these days. Or just our capacity, you know, to, to simply do the next right thing. But God, Jesus never underestimates us. You know, God knows we are made to love. Uh, that we are made to do great things. We are made to love and, and give ourselves away to others. No matter what the devil or self-doubt or society says, you know, when we say we can't or those things say we can't, you know, Jesus says we can. Um, the story of Jonah, if you, if you don't know the story of Jonah, um, when you go home, you should read it. You should read it in, in your Bible. It's, it's a short story. Uh, but basically, Jonah was told to, to preach to this the city Nineveh um, to, to try to, to get them to turn away from their sins, otherwise God would would destroy the city. And and Jonah didn't think he could do it. He didn't think he could do it. And he wasn't even sure that he should. Uh, I mean, Nineveh was the capital city of the Babylonian Empire. You know, the wickedest, brutalist city in one of the wickedest, brutalist empires that ever existed. Uh, not only did he think it would do no good, um, but he probably thought Nineveh was getting what they deserved. I mean, he, he totally thought Nineveh would be getting what he deserved. Uh, but God knew that Jonah was underestimating, you know, both himself and the people of Nineveh. Uh, that Jonah had the capacity through his words, through his effort to, to really touch the hearts and minds of the Ninevites. And the Ninevites had the capacity and the decency you know, to turn from their wickedness, their brutality, and repent, and, and, you know, and turn towards God. You know, no one would have thought that Andrew or Peter or James or John, you know, would have had the capacity to, to be the leaders they were, you know, to change the world, really. I mean, to have the strength and the love to carry Jesus' life and ministry, you know, after his death and resurrection. You know, the world probably underestimated them. The world certainly underestimated them. They probably underestimated themselves, uh, but Jesus did not underestimate them. You know, and thank goodness, I mean, thank, thank goodness that, that Andrew and Peter weren't like, you know, I mean, things are pretty good, Jesus. I mean, we got, we got a pretty good gig going here, you know, with the fish and the nets. Um, you know, I, God, I don't think this is the right time for me. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not sure I should be taking on this task right now. I just don't think I can do it. it. It would ruin me. And thank goodness, you know, James and John weren't like, you know, Dad, Zebedee, you know, he's, he's close to retirement. And we're about to take over the family business. And, you know, sorry, Jesus, but, but your plans, they're, they're just not my plans. Um, no thanks. You know, Jesus could see what his first followers could be didn't underestimate them. And Jesus sees what each and every one of us can be, and, and he does not underestimate us. You know, we may underestimate us. You know, we may doubt our capacity to, to do whatever Jesus asks of us. Um, we may fear what we can't, that we can't do it. We just don't have the strength to do it. If we really follow Jesus um, like he asks us to, you know, it, it, it would really hold us back would hold us back from what we really want in this life. Jesus is not trying to hold anyone back. Love does not try to hold you back. Uh, love never holds us back. It might change things for us. It, it might expand our horizons. It might take us places we never thought we would go. Uh, it might have us do things that we never thought we would do. But love never holds us back. You know, fear, doubt, uh, underestimating ourselves, those things hold us back. You know, they hold us back from love. They hold us back from life. Uh, they hold us back from, from being everything God knows we can be. So let's not let fear decide what we do. Let's not let fear make our choices for us. Because fear, fear only leads to death. Rather, let's choose love. Let's choose life. Let's choose Jesus, because Jesus knows what we're capable of. Jesus knows what we are meant for. We are capable of so much more. We are meant for so much more than what's
fear, self-doubt, uh, the devil, or, or anyone else might want us or tell us to settle for. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Jesus announced the kingdom of God is at hand. His kingdom reigns among us and it reigns among all people. Conscious of their needs and of ours, we now turn to God in prayer. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all the members of the church, that we may grow in our sense of urgency in preparing the way of the Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the guidance of the Holy Spirit with our nation and our leaders as they strive to bring about greater unity and cooperation among all our citizens and within the world community, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessing upon all the efforts to contain and to eliminate the threat of the coronavirus and for the health and safety of all the first responders, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for an end to violence in all the troubled parts of our world, and for the healing of minds and hearts of those who have been victims of violence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and suffering of our parishes, especially for the hospitalized and homebound, that they may know and experience the love and healing presence of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have gone to the Lord, we especially remember Joseph Rogers, Dana Perkins, Richard Reiser, Capuchin, Capuchin Bishop William Fay, Stephen Kuzmanko, Ed Pompuk, and Ellen Stoltz, who passed away recently, and for Larissa Fontana, whom we remember at this liturgy. May they share in the rewards of eternal life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we often become entangled in our nets hesitating to heed your call in our lives. Help us, like the apostles, to respond to you with ready and joyful zeal. For you live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the clergy and the faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
those following or celebrating with us online a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. All right, please be seated just a moment for the announcements. So we have an adult education opportunity beginning tomorrow. Um, it will be offered virtually through Formed. Um, it's called Search, and it's a wonderful opportunity to help answer some of the big questions that, that we have in our life. Uh, like, what do you seek? Who are you? Why a God? You know, what's our story? Who is Jesus? Am I saved? Why a church? Um, so please take advantage and check it out. Um, there's more information about it in the bulletin. Uh, Our Lady of the Angels Food Pantry is moving from the Lyceum on 45th Street to its new location on 37th Street this week. Uh, help is needed this Thursday and Friday from 9.30 in the morning to 4 p.m. If you can help at all, please call Bob McFadden, whose number is listed in the bulletin. Uh, volunteers are needed to sanitize the church immediately after Mass today, so if you're able, please stay to help. Um, and please put your kneelers down in the pews so that those sanitizing will know which pews to clean. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries being celebrated? Oh, okay. Nice. Again, that sparkly jacket. I see. Two birthdays or one? Two? All right, let me... Uh, I mean, you're like super tall, so I have really no idea. Uh, but um, 17, 18, 18. Well, happy birthday, happy birthday. Uh, eight? Yes. yes. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Any other birthdays or birthday? Okay, I won't guess, I won't guess. Happy birthday, what, what day, what day? The t when? Thursday, Thursday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Yeah. Over here? Yeah. Wednesday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Yeah, my, are you pointing at me? Okay, my birthday was this past Friday, so. Yeah, I'm, 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 I turned 46, so I'm getting like really old. <laughs> so, my cord's falling. I have to tie to my cord that was falling off. You know? <laughs> okay. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. <laughs>